My name is Joris, uh, thank you for the introduction. And um, I work at Europeana and I do plenty of things there, but one of the things I have done is uh, write a couple of papers and case studies. And I'm here to uh, present the, the latest one, which will be published uh, today, Making Impact on a Small Budget, how the Liefrist Kamaren of Skoklos de Slot met Stiefelsen had Viska Museet shared their collection with the world. Um, so thank you. Um, so um, I'm, this is what I'm going to talk about. So the background of this. Uh, last year I published another paper with, together with the Rijksmuseum because um, they have been, for the last few years, they have been celebrated uh, by many open data enthusiasts and many other people around the world about their open content policy, how they publish their public domain images online, about the, the beautiful Rijks studio where you can get all the images in high resolution download. And, um, that paper describes uh, not only the effects, but also what went on before they actually could do that publication. So it wasn't that from one day to another they just figured, let's do an upload now and we'll be done with it. It took quite a lot of internal progresses, discussion, copyright research and so on. So it was published last year, uh, you can read it, it's online. Um, but it also got some uh, critique or critique questions from, from other institutions that said, well, that's all great for them, but this is the Rijksmuseum. They are insanely big. They have been closed for the last 10 years. They have a lot of money. Um, they have had all the time to work on their online presence. How, as a small institution, can we copy that? We can't do that. Uh, that's only for them to do. So I figured, let's find out and work with another institution. So um, we, I quickly came across um, that Swedish institution <laughs> <laughs> and um, got in touch with uh, Karen, actually, who works there in the digital department, if I say it correctly. And um, basically the paper does, uses the same methodology. So I did some interviews, checked the uh, annual reports over the years, uh, did some statistics research with the Wikimedia tools that are uh, available and um, I'm here to present the results in the paper. So first about the, um, let's call it LSH. <laughs> um, this is, there are three buildings, but I guess um, it's easier if I let Karen talk about it, because no, originally I would give this presentation by myself, but then she was here, so I figured she could help. <laughs> <laughs> so Karen, if you want to talk a bit about what, what, what you are and... Uh... Thank you. Yeah, my name is uh, Karin Nilsson. I work as head of the Department of Digital Resources at Livruskammaren och Skoklosterslott med Stiftelsen Halvudska Museet. And, and we can't help this. So, uh, we funded by the state and uh, they said our name and um, it's not our fault. Uh, <laughs> we are uh, with three museums joined in one agency by, by the state and uh, there are 50 of us all together. So we're not huge museums we try to yeah uh, we'll just press a bit uh, down, down yeah that one that is oh, one yeah. of, of our museums so there's three castles basically upper class history kind of things so <laughs> we uh, we were uh, we're about yeah 50 members and we have about uh, 300,000 visitors each year so yeah not big museums at all and uh, we don't have much money either. <laughs> I, I'm not saying this because you should feel sorry for us. Um, because we, we get along fine, actually, I think. Um, and 2000 in... Uh, I do this as well, don't I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want. Um, we started a project, we started out uh, probably as, as you are, where did you go? There. Um, with a database and started out it in, in the same way. And in a couple of years ago, we realized that we should um, do this one step better. So we collected, a, uh, we started a project and we thought that we should um, do three different parts of it. So it's uh, to de develop a web interface to, for people to be able to download high-res images directly from our website, to publish uh, linked open data 
uh, with spe specific uh, URIs for the complete data set, including people, exhibitions, historical events, and so on, uh, to um, put correct, uh, to go through the entire collection and uh, put correct licenses on, on them, all the images in the in the collection, and Kåsom sök webbgränssnittet. Oh yeah. <laughs> Great, thank you. But <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose, actually. Uh, and then we put uh, about uh, 27,000 high-res uh, images on Wikimedia Commons as well. And then we linked all together. So we linked our website to the URIs in the open, um, uh, open linked data set. And we linked them to Wikimedia Commons. Done. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, that happened. Um, I quickly uh, also wanted to mention the uh, effects on image sale because I've, it wasn't originally part of the presentation, but I've heard it a lot during yesterday and today that uh, institutions are still a bit reluctant to publish high resolution images on the internet because there is the potential of making money. Um, well, your institution started with selling images as well back in 2004 or something, right? Back in the days where you had to uh, take the image, copy it to a CD-ROM, put the CD-ROM in an envelope and send it to the person who's requesting it. Kind of makes sense to charge a little bit for that. Um, but once you have an FTP server where people can just uh, do a, a save, that will radically reduce your costs. Um, but still, the, the image still uh, continued. Um, but as, as shown, this is a small institution, so the image sale, and correct me if I'm wrong, was done by uh, basically the curators. That uh, the request came in, there wasn't a dedicated person to look after these uh, image sale requests, so the curator had to handle these requests and uh, send the image to the person and, and the registration and everything. And um, um, that cost of actually doing that was much higher than uh, what they would earn with selling those images. And also curators have uh, uh, something... something. Uh, there we go. So this is a quote from the interview I did with Karen. Uh, we realized that the curators had more important things to do and decided to abandon the sale of images altogether. So it's... Um, you can... yeah. You know it's on Wikimedia Commons, so everybody has access to it. Also via their own website. You don't need to pay anything. You don't need to fill in a registration form. or There are no logins built on top of it, which makes it more difficult. Everybody can now get access. And so the image sale is gone, um, and that's actually beneficial for the institution. Also on very, a lot of other levels, but that's, it's not a financial drawback. Um, in this case, particular paper, I uh, discussed the case of copyright and the questions they had to deal with. Um, in this particular case, particular around two-dimensional and three-dimensional objects, and if digitization would generate new copyright. Um, everybody who was there this morning with Paul's um, uh, talk, it's very much um, a question of uh, originality. So, if you take a two-dimensional reproduction of a two-dimensional work, you can say this is there's no originality involved, it's just a direct uh, representation. When it comes to 3D, it sometimes becomes a bit more tricky because very often there's a photographer involved who needs to put it on, I don't know, a pedestal, put some lighting there. Um, and so you can quite easily argue um, that that is a work of originality. So you this uh, photographer or the person that gave the order to the photographer can claim copyright. And what I think was working really well for um, this particular institution is that before they started thinking about all these copyright questions, they um, had a digital strategy which said our starting point is give the public as easy access as possible. We want to be open by default. We only are going to uh, lock images away from our institutions if we can't open them up, if third party rights are involved, if it's not old enough, um, and so on. So what they did with all the three-dimensional um, things, so this is clearly a two-dimensional scan of a public domain painting, so they used the public domain mark made by Creative Commons to indicate this is in the public domain. 
this is 3D, these are a couple of rings, and you can, you can see that this is, I mean, I could have taken a completely different picture of these rings. There's some, some uh, mirroring going on. Um, so this is uh, clearly a work of where the photographer made an effort to make it like this. So they could claim copyright, and instead of, uh, yeah, well, and that means that they can also start using Creative Commons licenses. So here they chose to open it up, CC BY is a uh, attribution share alike, uh, I think most people know it. So everybody can still have access to these objects. And this is a bit how you, um, how their website looks like. So you can um, lada net hergups lutze build, that's the high resolution file. And below that, the link to the Wikimedia uh, comments page. And below that, there's all the metadata and, and so on. So that's how they deal, dealt with the uh, copyright questions that, that obviously arise when you start digitizing material. Um, so the results, um, like every <laughs> project we've heard today, I guess, a massive increase of visibility. So this is uh, a screenshot from this Baglama tool that was already shown. Um, you see two uh, kind of spikes. So one is uh, November 2013 and the other one is November 2014. And those are the dip months that new uploads were made. So um, there was already a bit on, on the internet going on from their museum. Then they did the uploads that radically increased the visibility. Stay a little bit stable, and then the new upload bumped it up even more. So these are monthly visits or monthly views of the images. So it's about around a little bit more than 600,000, if I can read that correctly. Five, well, whatever, a lot. Um, and this was, um, yeah, a thing that came really forward in the interview, uh, that there is uh, a big sense of pride that the collection is now being seen outside of Sweden. Although they have a, a, a beautiful website, it's very difficult to get non-Swedish people to your Swedish website. And uh, now the collection spreads to um, other uh, countries. The, the images are being used also in, in Thai Wikipedia articles, in places where you would never imagine that they would ever show up. But it happens. And um, they've worked quite well with the community as well. So there's a wiki page where uh, users can uh, suggest uh, improvements. So if they see, well, hey, uh, I think your metadata is wrong or your link is broken, um, there's a page for that where they can indicate that and the institution can use that kind of crowdsourced information to uh, improve their own database again. Um, yeah, and this is, I think, the biggest achievement that the I think, right, that the museum feels that they are doing the right thing. They're a public institution, um, they are there for the public, and now everything, everybody has as easy access as possible. And it led to an award uh, two years ago, one year ago? One year ago. One year ago, the Muse Award. It, I think the ones from this year are given out this month or something. But there's one in the category of open. Um, well, this is clearly a pretty open project. Um, and they won it, so here's Karen. <laughs> <laughs> on a picture. Um, and um, I think what is finally also good to mention is that this whole open image project uh, was done with a small fund of, I think, 31,000 euros. So they applied for a fund from a Swedish innovation, something, 31,000, which allowed them to do this. So relatively small budget, uh, which made a huge impact. Um, the lessons learned, write a digital strategy beforehand, so really think what do I want to achieve with my digital collection, who, who are my users, where do I want my material to be, uh, what do I want to be used for, because when you have that in place, then you can always refer back to that when you start uh, thinking about copyright, thinking about how to publicize your metadata and so on. Um, the metadata quality. I work for Europeana, um, it's a big issue, metadata quality. It's really a big difference between um, publishing your collection management system one-on-one -on -one to the web and um, actually making sure that this is being done in a way that is useful for a user, especially when you, like in a project like Europeana, put your collection in um, between a lot of other collections. So Europeana has 40 million records if you have a poor quality metadata set. It's basically useless to put it in there because it will just become unfindable. 
Um, yeah, and you can start small. Sometimes when I talk to institutions, they, they say, well, um, that's fine, but our database is a bit of a mess, and for half of it we still need to clear all the copyright and so on. And, and um, I think it's really easy to start with that part of your collection that is actually uh, free from copyright uh, restrictions, um, where you know that there will be an interest of. So Sandra, for example, presenting yesterday that Wikimedians are really looking for, um, how do you call it, indigenous material. If you know you have a little bit of that in your collection and you can see that there's a need for that, start with that. And um, yeah, look for the partnerships. I think a lot of institutions, um, you, you can always do a better job with other people. So uh, uh, Wikimedia community is a great example for that. And there are people really <laughs> interested in helping you out, but I don't think I need to tell you that. Um, that was it, so thank you.